Let me show you how to create a batch logo in Adobe Illustrator and place it in a mock-up using Photoshop. In this lesson, we'll go over how to use the Type on a Path and Shape Builder tools to create a simple badge logo for a fictional provincial park. I'll also show you how to use Photoshop to place the logo in a mock-up template. So let's jump right into this lesson and start creating. All right, I have my artboard set up here and we'll be creating a simple badge logo for a fictional provincial park called Crawford Creek. We'll start by creating an ellipse frame shape. So let's grab the ellipse tool. That's in the rectangle tool flyout. So click, hold, and choose ellipse tool. Hold your shift key and just draw out an ellipse shape like so. Now I do have a swatch that I created here. Let's just give that a fill color. And I'm just gonna zoom in here. And the first thing I wanna do is create another, another frame inside this circle and that'll become the path for our type. You could just click the shape, Command C, and then Command F to paste in front, and then hold Shift Option, grab the top handle and scale it down like so. Now I wanna reverse this. I don't want it to be a fill, I want it to be a stroke. So a quick way of doing that is Shift X, and now you can see that there is a black stroke, but I want it to be white so I can see it. Now that's just a path so we can type on. Once I once I use the type on a frame tool, what's what's gonna ha or type on a path tool, what'll happen is this white stroke will disappear. And I'll show you how to do that. So if I go to my type tool, click hold for the flyout and choose type on a path. I'm gonna click anywhere on this path and then you could start typing. So you can see as a default, that's the type that I'm gonna be using, Degular Display Black. And so let's type Crawford, all capitals, Crawford Creek. Let's make it white for now, a white fill. And I wanna center this, so you can do this up top here. You can see I've already centered it. Um, just center, align the text. Grab your selection tool and let's position this. You see these handles here? You wanna move them. This one here, move it to the top. And just align it with the little anchors there and do the same for the left or the right and the same for the left. And then you'll see that it's positioned the way we want. Now I want this text to be aligned center on this path. You can see right now it's on the top of the path. So let's go up to type, type on a path and choose type on a path options. Click your preview box here and you can see right now it's sitting on the baseline. So let's click that and choose center. And you can see in the preview, now it's center to the path. Go ahead and click okay. Now I can go in here and increase the text a little bit. Just double click to drive into it and then you can select the text. Right now it's 18 point and that's good, but I do wanna open up the tracking just a little bit. So hold your option key and right arrow key. And we can always adjust this after. Now I wanna create another copy of this and have the text come down below as well. So instead of repeating that same process, just do Command C for copy, Command F to paste in front, and then use your rotation tool here, just rotate, hold shift and rotate till it's at the very bottom. Now I know the text is upside down and we'll fix that now. Let's go back to type, type on a path and choose type on a path options. And we still want it to be on the center. The only thing we want to do here is click this button or this box here where we can flip the text. And if I click the preview, you can see now it flips. Everything stays the same other, other than the fact that it's going in the right direction now. So I'll click OK. And there we have our text for our badge logo. Now I do want to change this text down below. So I'm just going to double click, select it. And this will be Provincial Park. Good, now this is a good opportunity to either scale up or down this, both of these text frames here. So I just wanna bring it a little bit closer to the edge of the circle. So I have both of them selected. I'm gonna hold shift and option and just scale it up. Just something like that is fine. I'm gonna click the circle shape again and let's create another copy of that by going command C, command F, and let's scale it down, something like so. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knock out the center of this logo 
And for this, I'll use the Shape Builder tool. So I'm just going to select all of this. And in your toolbar here, you have the Shape Builder tool. Go ahead and click that. Hold your Option or Alt on Windows and just knock out that center piece. Now what we have is Crawford Creek Provincial Park. And what I'll do is just add another circle or an ellipse shape in the center here, something like that. And then we can go ahead and center all of this like so. And I just want this to be a little bit, maybe something like that works. Perfect. So now what we'll do is you can actually even, if I grab my ellipse frame or my ellipse tool again, just draw out two small circles here circle shapes and let's put one here we'll make it white now this is a vintage kind of looking badge logo i'm just holding shift and alt as i drag out another copy and then what i'll do is i'll group these make sure that they're aligned oops and they are but i'll also group them and it'll just make it easier when i'm when i'm aligning the logo uh, that these elements are grouped it just makes it easier I'm going to click this shape again and do command C, command F, and let's scale it down. Something like that is fine for now. Let's do shift X. Remember, we want this to be a path because I'm going to be typing some more text here. Let's grab our type on a path tool. Click here. And for this, I want the, the weight of it to be, let's try semi bold. Actually, let's try medium and then we can work our way up or down if we think that's too much. And so I'm going to center this again. Let's say founded. Yeah, that's much too big in 1976. So let's bump that down by holding shift command and then less than that's the triangle bracket. Make sure that's centered. It is OK, so let's reposition this now with these handles like I showed you before. Let's put this one at the very top and move these ones to the sides. And we'll scale that down. It's much too big still. So let's make it something like so. And again, I want to open up this tracking. So option, right arrow. And we can go quite a bit with this one. So we want this to sit at the center of the path. So just click on the selection tool, go to type, type on a path, and then type on a path options. Make sure your preview is on. Remember, it's sitting on the baseline as a default. We want it on the center. Click OK. Now we want this to be white, so just double click in there, select it, and make it white. And then let's create another copy of this. Command C, Command F, that's paste in front. Hover over the right corner, hold your Shift key, and rotate it. And the bottom part here, we'll say Beaverton, comma, Oregon, okay? We wanna flip this. So we have that frame selected. Go to type, type on a path, type on a path options, and click your preview and just hit flip. And you can see that that now flips. Now again, this is a good opportunity if you want for if you want to scale this up, so if you think that you want this text to be a little bit closer to the edge, select both. Hold your shift command, I'm sorry, shift option, and just scale it up just a bit until you're comfortable with the spacing, okay? So I think that's good. Let me zoom out a bit. I like that, how it's looking. I am going to make this, let's try uh, semi-bold. Yeah, I like that. And then what I want to do here, let me just ungroup this for a sec. I want to create another ellipse here and let's just make this just a bit smaller and then I'm going to hold my option or alt on windows, hold shift while you're doing this and just drag out another copy here. Now I want all these, I want all these ellipse shapes to be aligned. So go ahead and click all of them and then use your align to vertical center and then you can adjust like this. All right, so this is a good opportunity now to fix some of the letter spacing here or tracking. So let's start with Crawford Creek. If I click that, maybe let's open it up a couple, one, two, and then just kind of find the problem area. So maybe between the W and F, hold your option, bring that in. Um, you know, everything else looks pretty good. You can open up 
uh, between the R and A a little bit. Okay. And so let's do provincial as well. One, two, and then let's have a look at some of the kerning. So that could be tightened up a bit between the V and I. And to do that, I'm just placing my cursor in between the characters, holding option, and then using my right or left arrow to bring it out or in, okay? Here's between the I and A, maybe I'll tighten that up a bit. So take your time in terms of making that look good. Same with this, these two here. I'm happy with that, how that looks right now. Now, because this badge logo is a minimal look and a kind of a vintage feel, I just want a simple line art tree in the center. So I'm gonna create that on the side here. Let's start with uh, our line tool. So click and hold the ellipse tool and then choose line segment tool. And let's start with that. Just draw out a line like so. And let's make it that same color for now. And let's make the, the point size for the stroke, something like four for now. Now I want to create some branches here. So what I'll do is go back to our shape tools here and choose the polygon tool and click on the artboard anywhere. And then just make sure that the sides for this, it'll be defaulted to six, change that to three. So we're just building out a triangle here. And then what I do is just cut out that bottom portion using the scissors tool. I'm going to click that point there and that point there. And then I can use my drag selection tool to get rid of this bottom portion here. And then that, what that allows me to do here now, let me just make sure that one's gone too, is alter this. So I'm going to move this left side, maybe three hits while holding shift. One, two, three. Let's do the same thing on this side. One, two, three. I'm going to scale it down quite a bit. I'm going to position it over my line here and make sure that they're aligned. Okay, and let's do, let's make this just a bit smaller too, like that is good. Now I want to have round caps, so I'm just going to select both, go to my stroke options and choose round caps. And then what I can do is just click this first triangle shape that I created, which is our branch, hold my option key and hold shift, something like that is good. And then just do command D, command D, okay? And then use your direct selection tool to select the bottom point here and use your down key just to extend that branch out a bit. Now, before I expand this, what I like to do is just create another copy just in case I have to make any other changes. So that is good for now. Um, if you wanted to, you can also select all these points here, go up, up, up and to the right, one, two, three. If you wanted to shorten those branches, so let's do the same thing on this side, one, two, three, and then one, two, three to the left. I'm happy with that for now. I'm gonna select all of it and I'm gonna go to object, expand, and expand the fill and stroke, click okay. And then what I do is I'm gonna go to my pathfinder window here and choose merge, and then I could scale this down. I'm also gonna make this white because it's going in our, it's going in our badge logo here, you can see now it's it's not a path anymore. We can add a fill color to this, so we'll make it white. And then we'll move it in our shape here and just scale it down a bit. Something like that is fine. Scale it down just a little bit more. And obviously you can play around and do some other things if you wanted to make another copy of this, scale it down and try three trees, something like that. But I'll keep it to one for now. Now let's say I wanted another version of this, but white, what I'll do is just create, I'll create another shape here, do shift X and give it that color there, that fill color. And what I'll do is just select this and create another copy of it. I'll select the back shape and make that white. Let's select both our text elements here and make it the dark color. Let's select those shapes here, make it the dark color. What else do we have to do here? Let's go in. Let's make this white and make this that dark color and this the dark color, the tree, the dark color, and then those two points here. 
the dark color. So if I expand this a bit, now we have two versions of the logo, one in uh, the dark color and one in white. And so we'll export these now. You can put them on separate artboards and then export the artboards. But what I'll do here is just select one of the logos, go to file, export the selection. You can see I've exported a few uh, previously, but there's one here called asset 15 and I'm saving it to this folder here. You can select the folder that you want to send it to and click export asset. Let me just move this shape off to the side for a sec. Select your second logo and then go to file export selection. And same thing, there's the second logo. You could just export that selection and then I can move this back over here. So next, I'll show you how to mock this up on a mug image using Photoshop. All right, I'm in Photoshop now and I have a mock-up of a mug, which I'll share with you so you can practice and follow along. So let's say you wanted to present this to a client and in this case, it would be Crawford Creek Provincial Park. I'm gonna show you how to apply the logo or add the logo to this mock-up. So I'm going to bring in the two logos that we created in Illustrator, but first you can see in my layers panel, we have some smart object layers here that we can open up and add our logo to. So the one that we want here is called project. I'm gonna double click that and I'm gonna bring both logos in. So I'm just gonna drag them into this space here on this canvas. So I'm just gonna drag and then just accept that and accept that. The reason why I bring them both together is because they'll both drop in at the same size. This way I can select both, do Command T, and then hold Shift and Command and drag them down. And I'm gonna move it up, both of them up. Something like that, okay? I'm gonna just hit Return. I'm gonna turn the white one off because the you could see here our mug is white in this case, so I want the dark logo applied. So there it is there. I'm just gonna do Command S or File Save to save it on this canvas. And then if I click back, you could see that our logo has been applied to that mug. So you could just go to File and Save um, or Export As and a PNG to save it out as a PNG, this version here. Let's go back to this Smart Object layer. And in this case, I'm gonna turn on the white, turn off the dark, and I'll press save again, so Command S. There's another layer here for mug color. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to zoom in and I'm gonna, I'm gonna sample with my eyedropper tool this color here from the logo. If I go to mug color, let me turn that on. You can see in my swatches now I have that color that I sampled. I'm just gonna do Command S to save the color. And if I go back, you can see there's the mug in reverse colors, okay? So that's how you would apply our simple badge logo to a mug mock-up using Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to create a simple badge logo in Illustrator and place it in a mock-up template using Photoshop. If you found this video helpful, leave a like or comment below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified when new lessons are released. Do you want to learn how to create Instagram carousels using Adobe InDesign? Then check out one of my latest tutorials right here. Until next time, take care and keep creating.